Do you have a Layer 3 Cisco Catalyst switch? Well, if so, you're going to see in this video how you can route traffic from one VLAN in that switch to another VLAN. Enter VLAN routing with SVIs, Switch Virtual Interfaces. That's our focus in this video. Hi, my name is Kevin and I want to welcome you back to the channel. And if you're new, I'd like to invite you to subscribe so you don't miss any of our future content. Now, in this video, we're going to begin with a look at the need for an SVI. We typically do not want to use a router on a stick approach if we have a layer 3 or multi-layer switch and we'll take an animated look at how SVIs can help us out and after we've discussed the theory of a switch virtual interfaces we're going to go out and do a configuration. Specifically, we're going to configure a couple of SVIs to do inter-VLAN routing between a couple of VLANs on a switch and then we'll do some verification by going to a PC in one of the VLANs and seeing if it can reach a server in another VLAN. And by the way, this video is a sample of a course that I'm currently working on. I'm a little over 50% done at the time of this recording and it is a new version of my CCNA video training series. Now at the time of this recording Cisco has not yet announced their version 1.1 blueprint for the CCNA exam so I'm recreating my version 1.0 course and that's going to get me ready to quickly make that version 1.1 update once Cisco announces that. And right now the only way you can access the pre-release version of this course where I'm continually dropping in new videos as I create them, the only way to access this is to be a member of our All Access Pass. That's a membership program where you pay just $29 a month and you get access to our entire collection of on-demand courses, including the pre-release version of this CCNA course. And if you want to learn more about the All Access Pass, just visit kwtrain.com slash all hyphen access. That's kwtrain.com slash all hyphen access. Now let's dive into the content of this video as we check out SVIs. We've now seen that if we have a layer 2 switch that's not capable of making forwarding decisions based on IP address information, we've seen that we need to reach out to an external router, like a router on a stick, in order to do inter-VLAN routing. However, if we do have a switch that has layer 3 capabilities, we can route internally without reaching out to that external router, and that's what we're going to consider in this video. On a Cisco Catalyst switch with some layer 3 capabilities, we can create what is called an SVI, a switch virtual interface. And this virtual interface is going to have the IP address of the default gateway of devices on that subnet or on that VLAN. So instead of going over that trunk to the router on a stick to be our default gateway, the default gateway is on this virtual interface that we're going to create. For example, on this switch, if I wanted to get between sales and engineering, I could have a virtual interface for each VLAN. I would create a VLAN 10 interface, and I would give that the IP address of the default gateway of everybody on VLAN 10. We could give it an IP address of 172.16.1.1 with a 24-bit subnet mask, and we could then create interface of VLAN 20 and give it an IP address of the default gateway for everybody on VLAN 20, 192.168.1.1 slash 24. And we could define an SVI as a virtual interface that's going to take care of the routing for a particular VLAN, including acting as that VLAN's default gateway. And since this does allow us to make forwarding decisions based on layer 3 information, it's not going to be supported on a layer 2 switch. Now in this example, if our sales PC wanted to go to the engineering PC, it would send traffic into its switch port destined for its default gateway of 172.16.1.1. That means interface VLAN 10 is the ingress port and the switch then sees that we're destined for the 192.168.1.0/24 network and it sees oh yeah that's available out of interface VLAN 20, that virtual interface. So that becomes our egress interface which is going to make traffic go into VLAN 20 and specifically the PC we have in VLAN 20. So that's how we can do inter VLAN routing with SVIs. Now let's go up to a live interface and set this up. In this topology, I've removed the router and the trunk configuration that we set up when using a router on a stick for a layer 2 switch because this switch can actually act as a layer 3 switch. We can have SVIs. And to confirm that we're not currently doing routing, let's make sure that PC1 cannot ping server 2. Can I ping 172.16.1.200? And we'll give it a few seconds because it might be trying to do an ARP 
to learn the MAC address of its default gateway. But I think enough time has passed to let me break out of that. That was unsuccessful. Let's see if we can fix that by adding a couple of SVIs. And we'll do that on Switch 1. And on Switch 1, let's confirm our existing configuration. If I do a show VLAN brief, we see that we have PC1 and Server1 belonging to VLAN 10. PC2, Server2, they belong to VLAN 20. I no longer have the trunk connecting to that router on a stick. Let's confirm that by doing a show interfaces trunk command. And we have no trunk. So what we want to do now is create a couple of virtual interfaces. One for VLAN 10, one for VLAN 20. So let's go into global configuration mode and create this virtual interface named VLAN 10. And we'll give it the IP address that's going to be the default gateway for PC1 and Server1 in VLAN 10. That's going to be an IP address of 192.168.1.1 with a 24-bit subnet mask. And like a physical interface, I need to do a no shutdown command to administratively bring this up. And once it's administratively up, that's still not a guarantee that the interface is up. What determines if the interface is going to be up or not at this point is whether or not we have any ports that belong to that VLAN that are up. Now, in this case, VLAN 10 has two ports that are up. Gig 0 slash 1 connected to PC1 and Gig 0 slash 2 connected to Server 1. So this interface should be up. Now, let's go do the same thing for VLAN 20. We'll say interface VLAN 20. It has an IP address of 172.16.1.1, again, with a 24-bit subnet mask. Again, we'll do a no shutdown command. And now, if I look at my IP interface status by doing a show IP interface brief command, we see that we have these two interfaces that just got created, VLAN 10, VLAN 20. They have appropriate IP addresses. And notice that they are up at layer 1 and they are up at layer 2. These virtual interfaces should be able to route between VLANs 10 and 20. Let's try it out. Let's go to PC1. And earlier, we tried to ping Server 2 over in VLAN 20, and it failed because there was nothing configured to make a layer 3 forwarding decision. Now there is. So let's once again ping 172.16.1.200, and we'll give a moment for ARP to resolve the MAC address. And look at this. We are consistently pinging server 2. And don't be concerned with this 20% packet loss because this PC had to ARP for the MAC address of its default gateway before the pings were successful. But if I now do a ping, it will be 100% successful and we should have 0% packet loss. Let's confirm that. 0% packet loss. And that's a look at how we can, with a layer 3 switch, create virtual interfaces to act as default gateways for our different VLANs. And that's going to allow us to do inter-VLAN routing within a layer 3 or multi-layer switch without having to rely on an external router.